Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> How are you today, Ms. Jiggets? I'm good. And yourself? I am well. I'm excited to host today's presentation. This is a very informative one. And so I am ready to get started when you are. Okay, we'll give them um, a few more minutes. Okay. Awesome. So everyone, good evening. My name is Samantha Sinclair. I'm the founder and CEO of Pathway to Purpose. Can you just drop a, drop a good evening in the chat for me so I know you can hear me? Also, let me know if you're a parent, a student, a staff. I'd love to know who's in the room with us. Awesome. Thank you, Johnny. So happy you're here today. I know it's 530 after a long day, but I'm glad you're here. Miss Linda, nice to see you again. Happy you're here. Miss Lawrence, thank you for being here. Rep and Prize School Counselors. Principal Reed, thank you again for having me. Awesome. Ralph, ninth grade student. Great. We have a good mix today. Awesome. Yes, this is going to be good. Yes, it is. And we have a prize, of course. So Yay. it'll be awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yes, please do take notes. Mr. Myers, see you. How are you today? Awesome. It's so cool to see all of my old colleagues here. Like somehow the universe brought us back together. Life often comes full circle, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it, yes. It, it's funny how that happens. I did a workshop earlier today at noontime mm -hmm. that was hosted by a couple of folks from the office for post-secondary planning. And um, both of the hosts are people whom I've worked with extensively wow. in previous schools. So, small world. Yeah, small it's, world. A, it's a small world, you, you know. We, uh, our paths cross all the time. Yes, especially in the world of education. Exactly. It's, it's great when you do great work, right? <laughs> awesome. So today we are going to be talking about preparing for college now. We have seen, you know, um, overwhelmingly that students start thinking about college in 12th grade and whether you're in 12th grade whether you're in 11th grade ninth grade seventh grade it is the perfect time to talk about college of course the sooner the better but ideally we want to give you enough time to get ready so ralph excellent job being here today you're going to gain so much information that you can be really ready for the application process um, come your senior year. And so I'm really excited for you, especially for my parents, regardless of what grade your child, son or daughter is in. The truth is it's never too early and it's not too late. And so there's just so much information we're going to share. So I'm just going to get started with some of the presentation um, introductions, if that's OK. So Kathleen is here with me in the chat. She's a person responding from the info at P2P. She might drop some links in the chat. She may answer any questions. She's controlling our panels today. And so she is our awesome project manager. She um, has worked with many of you in the past as well, hosting college trips, pre-tour workshops. And so she's a person that's going to be co with me today as well. So if you hear me reference her, um, it's, it's not a random or a ghost. She's actually in the chat. All right, so today we're talking about preparing for college now. Some quick Zoom guidelines in order to get through everything. Let's just remain on mute. Again, drop any questions you have in the chat. Please take notes. You can feel free to ask and answer questions in the chat. Kathleen is here to help and support. I want everyone, regardless of whether you're a student, a parent, a staff, just vote for us. Um, if you're voting on behalf of your students as a staff member, that's fine. If you're voting on behalf of your son or daughter as a parent, that's fine. But these polls were in fact intended for students. And so we'd love to just gauge where students are in the process. Remember, we are here to help. Um, Path to the Purpose prides itself in being added value to all of the schools that we work with. And so whether it's on this call or, you know, contacting us through social media or via email, the help doesn't end here. So please feel free to reach out to us if you have any addition, um, any additional questions or comments after today's presentation. And let's have fun. 
So what we have found is that for so many people, the college application process is one that they dread and you don't have to. Once you have the information and you're ready, it'll be quite the easy process. So we're here to help them make that, we're here to help you make that process easy for you. So let's get going. All right, so today we're going to talk about some resources, some quick ways to save time and money, um, some upcoming events, and then some winner announcements. So for the upcoming events, we're going to be talking about how you can stay um, connected to Path to the Purpose as far as the scholarship announcements and any events that we have going on in our world, we'll let you know of um, as well. And then, of course, we'll discuss who wins based on active participation. I know Miss Linda won last time and she let us know that she loved her gift and so we're so happy to hear that. Thank you so much for letting us know and so today we'll have another winner um, for one of our cool prizes. All right, so today's prize is a water bottle. Last time we actually had two winners. We had a student win and we had a um, parent win and so today our prize is this water bottle Whoever is the winner today is going to be getting one of any of the choices here, whether it be U Albany, Yale, um, Seton Hall University, Harvard, it really just depends and it'll really be a surprise for you. So you kind of see what happens once you receive the prize. All right, so Kathleen, as I mentioned, she is our project manager. She went to the university at Albany, has a bachelor in soci um, sociology. She, like myself, is a first generation student or college graduate, and she's a native Spanish speaker. So she actually has been able to host a number of our parent workshops and student workshops in Spanish. She's also worked with a large population of English language learners. Um, and so she just does an outstanding job of not only connecting to the students, but making this, this process all of our events and all the services that we provide really fun for them. I am, like I mentioned earlier, Samantha Sinclair. I'm the founder and CEO of Pathway to Purpose. Um, like Kathleen, I went to SUNY Albany and it is coincidental that we went to the same university. We did not meet in college. However, um, I'm really glad that, you know, we were able to connect thereafter. So I went to SUNY Albany. I have a bachelor's degree in social welfare. I then went to Columbia. I did an accelerated program and earned my master's degree in higher education. And I'm currently a PhD student at Seton Hall University. I'm actually in my final two classes. And for anyone that wasn't here last time, clearly I love everything college because many years later, I'm still on the road to obtaining this last degree. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm also first generation. My family is from Guyana. And a fun fact about me is Really, when I was going to college, I really relied on my school counselor and my guidance counselor, the college counselor. So for me, my team at my school was everything because being first generation meant my parents did not go to college. They didn't understand the process. And although they provided tremendous support, there was support in school that I really needed to kind of take me to the next level. And so I'm really glad that you know we have some students here who are going to understand the importance of utilizing your school staff as a resource. All right, so we do have some poll questions and this is just our quick way of getting to know everyone in the room. And so let us know, are you ready for today's presentation? Is that a yes or an of course? And so we're gonna give you a few seconds to vote. Go ahead and submit your answers and let's get started. And once everyone has voted, Kathleen is going to pop that up for me. All right, so overwhelmingly we have yes, and then we have of course, so let's get started. All right, so for my students especially, and for my parents, what is one part of the college prep process that you are most concerned about? What's the one part? Is it the application? Is it the cost of attendance? Is it selecting a college? Is it choosing a major? Is it making that college list of 10 to 15 colleges? Or is it all of the above? Which one is it? Let me give you a few seconds to vote. Make sure you get your votes in so we can know what to focus on in today's presentation. All of the above. <laughs> which is why I added that part. So all of the above, there's so many parts to the college application process. And I know that all of it can be intense, but we're gonna spend a few minutes on each part, kind of walking you through the how to's of it. Awesome. I think we have a resource to share with you. So I'm so glad that your school um, is 
just being able to access one of these resources. So the College Study Flashcards is something that we created just last year. And this is our way to ensure that despite all the challenges of COVID, despite all of the challenges of access to education, we were creating a resource to ensure that schools, students, um, students that are entering college had the information that they needed to succeed in college. And so I mentioned I'm currently a PhD student at, C at Seton Hall University. I spent the duration of my program studying uh, transitioning to college, but especially what it means for first generation students who may not have the guidance that they need and really just overall, what are the trends in education? And if students mastered them, what were the areas that we can focus on to ensure success? And so the five topics that we came up with was types of colleges. We know that there are thousands and thousands of colleges to choose from. So we help students categorize those. We also came up with college resources. Once you get to college, it is a whole different world than high school. So we wanted to ensure that students knew what were the support services provided on college campuses. Entrepreneurship, we get this question all the time. Students have asked me on college tours, like what, what do I need to do to be an entrepreneur? What do I need to familiarize myself with? So we created the entrepreneurship deck as well. So that just outlines key business terminology to make sure the students are on the right road to um, uh, business success, financial aid, self-explanatory. There are so many different terminologies that you'll come across on the FAFSA, um, on the college websites, on the college application. So we want to make sure that you understood everything you need to know about the world of financial aid. And lastly, affirmation. So I'm not sure if you're familiar, but so many of our students end up going to college and for one reason or another do not feel like they belong. And so the affirmation deck was really designed to ensure that we're creating this mental strength, this grit, and really developing a winning mindset that it takes to succeed in college. I'm super excited that your school has decided through um, Ms. Jiggets, Mr. Reed, and I'm not sure if there's anyone I'm missing, but they have purchased all of these decks to hand out to students. And so I cannot wait for students to get their hands on them and to really bolster their college prep process, um, just becoming familiar with terminology. So I'm really excited for you guys to get your hands on those. All right, so our next poll question, does your guidance or school counselor know you well? So my parents and my students, would you say that you have a relationship where your guidance or school counselor knows you as the parent or you as the student well? Uh, just answer yes or no for us, please. All right, and I'm loving the honesty. So we have 33% saying um, yes, and 30, 67% saying no. That is an awesome place to be, and I'll tell you why. Let's go to the next slide. So here's why we asked this question, and this is a common thing, right? Where students and or parents don't understand really the value of developing a relationship with their guidance school or college counselor. Let me tell you, they are the gatekeeper of information, of access to scholarships, of letters of recommendation, of fee waivers. My guidance counselor, her name is um, Miss Marianne Finn. And to this day, I am still in touch with her. I graduated from college many, many, many years ago, but she is someone that I pride myself in still having a relationship with. She has written all of my letters of recommendation since being a high school student. And I'm talking through college, through grad school, through PhD program just the person that I go back to each and every time. She also has great um, connections with colleges and universities. And she was a person that I discussed career options with. So being Caribbean, my mom was just like, you are not going that far away. Like you're going right to York in, in Queens where your sister went. And for me, it was just like, York is great, but I wanna go away. I wanna explore life outside of New York City. I lived in Brooklyn my entire life. So I wanted to kind of venture out, but my, you know, just discussing this with my mom who wanted to keep all of her daughters close and having a great relationship with Miss Finn was really the reason I was able to end up going to the University at Albany. I mean, if it was up to me, I would have went to Buffalo, but my mom said, you know, if you go to Buffalo, I'm not visiting you. So I decided we can come to an agreement and figure out like, all right, Buffalo's eight hours, Albany's only three. So 
Albany worked out for both of us, but really Miss Finn was the force behind all of this. My letters of recommendation, access to scholarship, fee waivers. I didn't pay a dime for college applications and that was thanks to Miss Finn. So I really wanna stress the importance of getting to know these counselors because they have a wealth of information and they have access to everything you need when it comes to going to college. All right, next question. And I think I might know the answer. Do you wanna save time and money when it comes to going to college? Is that a yes or is that an of course? Do you wanna save time and money when it comes to college? That's an of course, right? 71% said of course, 29% said yes. And of course, we don't have a no because we can assume that everyone anywhere wants to save time and money when it comes to anything, but especially when it comes to college. So let's dig into it, saving time and money when it comes to college. Do you know about the College Now program? We're gonna vote using the poll in a second. So just type in a quick yes or no. Do you know about the College Now program? All right, so we have 63% saying yes and 38% saying no. We're gonna get that 38% to a yes as well. So College Now is actually a program that's near and dear to my heart because I was a College Now student in high school. So I love to spread the word about College Now. I actually was also the assistant director of College Now in the Bronx at Hostos Community College many years after graduating from high school. So that's like a double you know, passion for the program, but it's a free dual enrollment program. And all that dual enrollment means is a student is in two programs at the same time. So they're earning their high school diploma, but they're also earning uh, you know, credits towards their college degree. So College Now is a program where high schools in New York City partner with CUNY colleges. CUNY stands for City University of New York. There are 25 CUNYs. So based on your location, determines which um, CUNY your school is going to be partnered with. This program is especially for 11th and 12th graders and they can earn up to 15 college credits while they're in high school. Something I want you to understand about credits is on average, college credits are usually three credits. There are of course one credit, two credits and four credits, but generally the average number of credits for one class is three. And there are institutions where one class, which is three credits, can cost you, you know, uh, $1,000. And then there's programs on the higher end, like at Columbia, and certainly also at Seton Hall, where one class is going to run you $4,000, right? So let's kind of quickly do the math. If three credits is going to cost anywhere from $1,000 to potentially $4,000, let's think about how much money we potentially are saving by participating in this program. Something you should understand is that when a student first goes to college, their first and most of their second year is going to be dedicated to general education classes. Those are the classes that everyone must take in order to graduate. So that's your math, that's your foreign language, um, that is your you know, social studies of some sort. And so these classes, they can actually get out the way before they've enrolled in college and potentially save you know, a half of year in credits because this program is free. If any of this is not clear, please let me know in the chat and I will, you know, clear it up for you. If you have any questions about college now, please do let me know, but it's an excellent program where students not only get to understand the differences between college classes and high school classes, they get to interact with college professors. For some of the programs, they're actually going on the college campuses. So at Hostos, most of the schools that we're partnered with, they were coming to the campus after school. And then the truth is like, they understand now what it's like to be a student, but also get to help narrow down their um their major so i remember being in the college now program thinking oh right i'm gonna you know pursue business as a major i took the business class and i was like yeah this isn't it like i'm not i don't think at this point at age you know 17 16 i wanted to pursue business but here i am now but um college now is certainly a great way to help students really just prepare for the rigor of college but also narrow down you know do i want to pursue this major or not so it's an excellent program and so for Ralph and any other students that's in here, consider pursuing the College Now program in your 11th grade year. 
we did some research because clearly we love everything college now. And we realized that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Jiggs and Mr. Reed, Mr. Mara, everyone else that's here, Ms. Lawrence, let us know. But based on the information online, your school is partnered with BMCC where you can take classes. I'm not 100% sure if you're actually going to the campus or if someone is coming to the school to teach your um, college now classes. But either way, it is an excellent, excellent program that I strongly encourage you guys to participate. If you're a parent in the room like Miss Linda, certainly let your son or daughter know um, about the college now program and really help them understand how to best prepare for this program, you know, in their junior and senior year. The next great thing about College Now is that they have a program called My Self Third. It's actually a scholarship in the amount of $5,000. And the scholarship is just another excellent way to afford college, you know, come time. So they award the scholarship to exceptional and inspirational community service. And you all are in for a treat because the truth about college now is, like I said, I was not only a student, but I was the assistant director and I served on the Myself Third um, Scholarship Committee Board where we selected the students. And there were times that we had to extend the deadline because not enough students were applying. So, so many students are intimidated by the entire process, but sometimes you don't even know like what your chances are of getting the scholarship because people become so overwhelmed at the competition that they don't even apply. So again, this is just another great way to earn money before you know having to pay for college expenses. And then also all you have to do is have completed and passed one college now class or more. You have to be a junior, a senior planning to attend a CUNY and then you have to be nominated by a teacher. I'm gonna stop for a minute because I see some responses in the chat. Ms. Dixon is saying it's virtual right now. Applications will be distributed shortly. That is excellent. If you are unfamiliar with College Now, please reach out to your school to make sure that um, you're able to apply for the program and if you qualify. But again, it's an excellent, excellent way to ensure that um, you're preparing for college in the best way possible. Another question that we get all the time is, well, I don't want to go to CUNY. Should I take College Now anyway? The answer is yes. So I ended up not going to CUNY. Like I mentioned, I went to the University at Albany and my credits were able to transfer there. So the credits overwhelmingly are transferable. So you don't have to want to go to CUNY in order to participate in college now. The other part is, for so many students, um, when I was at Hostos, they were like, I don't wanna have credits from Hostos, it's a community college. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. The truth is, again, this is your way of showing a college that you are thinking about and preparing for college long before you got there. So whether your credits are at Lehman College or City College or BMCC or Hostos Community College, all that does is gives you a plus and adds value to your college application. So please be sure to apply and it's anticipate applying if you're not ready um, in your junior or senior year. All right, so a little bit more about college now that I didn't know in high school. If you get an 85 or higher on your New York Regents, it can qualify you to be exempt from general education classes in college. For high school, if you have taken three years of language and passed the foreign language regents, that can also exempt you from taking a foreign language course in college. Now, I know there's been so many changes due to COVID, but what we can expect is that things are slowly going back to what they were before. We understand that there's been so many changes, but the truth is, a lot of these programs and exemptions still exist. So your job would be to contact the colleges that you're interested in going to, you know, send them an email, give them a phone call and find out what are the permissions that they're still allowing despite the impacts of COVID. The next one is native language speakers can, you know, completely opt out of taking the um, foreign language course by doing a language proficiency exam. So many of the students that we work with in the past have no idea that this exists. And when I was in high school, I actually ended up getting an 82 on the Spanish regions. And had I known that this was the case where I needed three more points to be exempt completely from foreign language, I would have tried a little bit harder, honestly. So I'm sharing this with all of you because it's such great information. And again, it not only saves you time, but it certainly also saves you money. So this class, again, at one college, it could be $800. At another college, it could be $4,000. But the goal is whichever college you're at is to save you that money and save you the time as well. 
All right. Are you familiar with the common application? Vote yes or no, please. Are you familiar with the common application? Awesome. So we have a little bit of a split. We have 43% saying yes and 57% saying no. Let's get that 57 to yes as well. So the common application, and I hope for those of you that have a pen and a paper, you are taking notes. This is the most important part. The common application is a standardized application that's used by over 600 colleges, private and public across 47 states to simplify the college application process, right? So we understand there are multiple application processes, but this is the most popular one, the Common App. The Common App, you're going to say, you know what, I wanna to go to these 10 colleges. You'll ensure that those 10 colleges are on this list and you'll submit one application. When you submit this one application and you provide all the information that they're looking for, they're going to then share it with each of the colleges and each of the colleges will then download the application from this site. Is that clear to everyone? If it is, just drop a yes in the chat so I can know to continue. If I, all the information about the Common App that I just explained is clear, just drop a quick yes in the chat so I'm, we can continue. So again, one application that is used by 600 colleges that you can use to apply to as many colleges as you'd like. So I actually have a niece, her name is Tabriana, and we just went through this process. I think she applied to like 18 colleges and we just used this one application to do it all. And it was amazing. So what you'll need for the Common App is a copy of your high school transcript, which is again, why you wanna have a relationship with your counselor. You'll need a list of your extracurricular activities, both in school and out of school. So for my students like Ralph, you wanna start building that list if you have not already. And this is not one-off experiences. These are things you've committed months and years to, right? So where you want a debate team of any sort? Did you do any community service? Were you an intern? Um, were you on the basketball team? Were you on the baseball team? Like all of this is very, very important information. Um, I actually created a job at my old high school where I was supporting my guidance counselor through like her, you know, faxing and collecting mail and running errands. And that became something I was able to put on my resume. So the list is essentially what your resume is, but you're going to have to input all that information into your common app. Test scores, which includes the SAT and ACT. Something I wanna share with everyone is that so many students this past year opted out of taking the SAT, but what they also didn't realize was the SAT allows you to earn additional scholarships. So with my niece, she decided not to take the SAT, but she didn't know that it would mean down the road, she would not qualify for some of the merit scholarships um, that were being afforded to everyone else. And so I would strongly suggest that you take the SAT. If your score is not one that you enjoy or one that you think is you know, permissible to submit this to the college of your choice, then don't, but give yourself a chance to see what happens when you take it do your best to prepare so that you don't miss out on the opportunity to earn additional scholarships. The last part is the parent and legal guardian information. So many students try to do this application on their own and they just can't. It is an intense, meticulous application that you really have to take your time with. And so I strongly suggest that if you're a parent, sit with your son or daughter to do it. If you're a student, find your parent or someone that you know is familiar with the process and can help you through it, but either way, like I said, there's just so many different parts to the application that you miss one part, you might miss the opportunity to earn a scholarship and that we don't want. So you can actually start checking out the Common application. Kathleen, if you can just go ahead and drop the link to the Common app. You do not have to be a senior to check it out. There's so many YouTube videos on um, online for you to see what it's like and kind of get an inside view of it. So this is just one part but it's an entire kind of lengthy application that you can check out you know, at your earliest convenience. Thank you, Kathleen. The link is in the chat, so go ahead and check that out you know, once the presentation is done. This is the one part that I also wanna focus on of, of the Common App, which is the extracurricular activity section, right? So if we look on the left really quickly, you'll see the profile, which will just include the student information. We'll see family information, we'll see education, we see testing, and then we see activity. So this is the part of the application that so many students kind of rush through. And again, this is you saying, 
I am a well-rounded student that can potentially add value to the college campus. And so if you skip this part, you might also be skipping out on your chance to be admitted by this college. So you're going to put in the activity type, the position, and then also describe the activity so that they know exactly what you were responsible for. So it is your job really to come into this process with a resume so that when you're filling this out, you can literally just copy and paste everything onto this section. So again, if you're in ninth grade, 10th grade or 11th grade, you still have the opportunity to start building up this section to ensure that you increase your likelihood of getting accepted to these college campuses. And then the last part of the Common App or any college application is the college essay. I'm just gonna do another poll really quickly. Have you ever read a college essay? Go ahead and type yes or no for me in this um, poll, please. Yes or no, have you ever read a college essay? And I know for my counselors in the room, especially and school staff, you've read tons of these. And so if you're a parent or student, go ahead and you know click yes or no as to whether you read a college essay before. All right, 88% saying yes and 13 saying no. So our goal is always to close the gap between yes and no. So let's go ahead and do that and give you some resources that you can check out. All right, so the great thing about the Common App, especially you know all of my counselors in the room know this, the questions haven't changed. These questions have been around probably longer than I've been alive. But what I can say for sure is that these are the same questions that I answered when I was going to college many, many years ago. So here are the seven prompts that students can choose from. Their background, identity, or interest, which is always a great thing to do. One tip I'm gonna share um, that I love to share with my students is, if you speak another language, start your essay in another language. Like start the opening sentence in another language. And it always works, like colleges love it. If you are, you know, if you have a very diverse culture, speak about the food of your culture, speak about the tradition, speak about the clothing, like colleges want to learn all about your different cultures. And so do not take your background, your identity for granted. There's so much about who you are that people are very interested in learning about. Recount a time when you face a challenge, setback or failure. The thing about this question is it's so tricky, right? Because they wanna see that you faced the challenge, but you also overcame that challenge. So what is the thing that you can focus on that was challenging, but you overcame it so that your essay isn't terribly sad or you know makes the, the reader feel terrible after they read it. They kind of wanna feel uplifted and inspired after really reading your story. Reflect on a time when you answered a question or you were questioned or challenged a belief, self-explanatory, right? How did you overcome that? Describe a problem you solved Discuss an accomplishment, an event, or realization that sparked personal growth. Describe a topic, idea, or concept you find interesting. And then share an essay um, on any topic of your choice. So based on these prompts for my students and for my parents who are working with this son or daughter, which one do you think you might be most interested in choosing and or working on? And remember, these questions are going to be the same all over again, despite what year you're going to college. So consider writing it early just to ensure that um, you kind of get through the process. So when the poll comes up, go ahead and select which of the essay prompts you might be most inclined to choose. Is it a background? Is it a challenge? Is it a time that you questioned a belief, a problem you solved, an accomplishment? a topic you find interesting, or just an, another essay of your choice. All right, let's see what you said. All right, so most people said number one or number two, which is background or a challenge. And then we had some people say they're going to discuss the problem they solved, they discuss an accomplishment, or describe an idea or concept that they find engaging. Awesome. So like I said, you do not need to wait. You can actually start doing that application essay right now. I have helped so many students write their college essays and this is one of my go-to resources. Um, this is such an amazing resource because the truth is you have to read some examples of where you wanna be, the kind of essay quality you wanna write. So this, this book is actually available everywhere but especially on Amazon. 
And these are tons of essays that work. So these students were granted admissions into um, a number of different colleges based on the quality of their essay. So what I would recommend is that go ahead and get this book or get a book similar to it and start spending some time reading college essays so you can understand the quality of what these colleges are looking for. Of course, right? You're not gonna end up writing the same type of essay, certainly not always the same topic, but if you can get an understanding of, okay, here's how descriptive I need to be, here's how much details I need to provide, then you can increase your chances of earning um, admissions into a college. And here's why this is important. So for example, SUNY New Paltz, they usually get 14,000 applications for 1,150 seats. That just means that admissions to this college and many other colleges is super competitive. So you want to be able to stand out by telling your story. This book is filled with standout storytelling. So if you have not written it down, go ahead and write it down. I think it's like less than $20 on Amazon and it's certainly worth the investment. Again, whether you're in ninth grade or going into 12th grade, it's an excellent, excellent resource for you to have on hand. And again, even as someone who has helped tons of students anytime, I'm gonna sit down with the students to help them with their essay. This is the book that I'm turning to. And I actually used it this year um, when helping my niece prepare her application. Excellent book. Kathleen, if you can find the link um, to the book, I think it is on Amazon. It's um, just go ahead and drop it in the chat for us uh, at any point before the presentation ends. Awesome, in the, in the chat already, superstar, thank you. All right, our next poll question, do you have a resume? Do you have a resume? If you're a parent answering for your son or daughter, does your son or daughter have a resume? Do you have a resume? Let's see what we got. 57 said yes, and 43% said no. All right, let's get those 43s to a yes as well. So why is it important? This resume, again, is going to outline every bit of information as to who you are, right? So the goal is to be descriptive. You wanna go ahead and add any AP exams you took. If you took College Now classes, you wanna add that any awards or honors, any community service, any sports, any leadership positions, any work experiences. So many students often say, like, I haven't done anything. But if you were a leader in your church, if you were the community babysitter, if you have helped you know, in your neighborhood in any capacity, if you have volunteered at the library, if you, you know, um, shovel cars in the winter, like our driveways in the winter, whatever it is that you do and have invested time in, that is something you can note on your resume. If you've been a tutor, if you've helped students, you know, um, prepare for an exam, those are all things that you can note. So before you just say, you know what, I have not done anything, think through what is it that you've done from ninth grade until now um, to ensure that you can you know, develop your skills, develop your, whether it be public speaking, develop the exper experiences that you have, but also increase your likelihood of going to college as well. So if you have not done anything, if your son or daughter has not done anything, now is the time. And I know we're in a weird time where so many things are still not happening in person, but trust everything is happening online. So there's so many companies looking for internships. I know that, um, Summer youth just came back this year. I know that we're past the deadline, but also a lot of companies are looking for, you know, social media managers. They're looking for content creators. They're looking for students to do all these amazing things they do normally. So two um, job searching companies I want to just note, and Kathleen, if you can drop it in the chat, is idealist.org. And that is a great um, website to find out about different unpaid and paid opportunities for students and you know professionals, but also indeed.com, that's another one. So these are just two great websites where you can search different opportunities that are online and start building your resume now. And because we're in such a virtual world, there's just so many different opportunities that you can pursue from at home. So I idealist.org and indeed.com. Thank you, Kathleen, for dropping it in the chat. And again, this is not the part of the application you wanna skip. This is the part that's going to really determine um, and help the college determine, are you a good fit for their campus? They wanna see that you've not only excelled academically, 
but you've also pursued passions outside of school as well. Next question, have you started looking for scholarships? So this is the part where so many people are concerned about, but we wanna see, have you started the scholarship search or scholarship hunt to ensure that um, you can you know, afford college in a way that doesn't leave you in debt or doesn't leave your, your parent or son or daughter in debt? No, and that this is our first 100% consensus. The answer is no, awesome. So we actually have a really great tip that we're going to share with you. So Google Drive is the powerhouse behind the success of Pathway to Purpose. We do everything in Google Drive. Now, one thing that we did was we created a system. So when COVID happened, we lost all of our contracts. And at that point, so many major companies stepped up and wanted to support businesses doing great things. So what we did was we created a grant system, right? So this grant system is exactly what's noted here. We noted what grant was out there, what was the amount, what was the deadline, and then any notes that we needed to keep in mind about this particular grant. And honestly, using this system, we were actually able to obtain $80,000 in grant funding. And grants, like scholarships, is money that you do not have to pay back. We actually found out that we won a grant today. And so it's just amazing what we've been able to do using this system. And we want to make sure that we share you know, the systems that we have found successful with you. So again, you're just going to go into Google Doc, which is an essentially a, a live you know, Excel spreadsheet. And you're going to know what are the scholarships that exist what are the amounts, what's the deadline, and any notes that you need to keep in mind. So for scholarships, it might say requires two letters of recommendation, requires an interview, requires an additional essay, whatever the note is, you put it there. And this is just a great way to get organized. So the great thing is that Path to the Purpose on both our website and also um, our you know social media pages, we pride ourselves in giving students information about scholarships all the time. Kathleen, if you can just go ahead and drop our website in the chat and also um, our uh, Instagram page and Facebook page. And this is just a way to ensure that students have access to all the great scholarships that exist. And I, I kid you not, there are students that I've worked with in the Bronx that have earned 200,000 in scholarship money. There are students that I've worked with in the Bronx. Um, she was actually a Gates, uh, Bill Gates scholar at the time. And she won over $1 million in scholarships because she applied a system that I'm sure might've been similar to this and just kept going at it one after the other and continued to apply for scholarships, whether it be through the colleges, through companies, through individuals. And she won $1 million in scholarships. Great question. So what happens to the funds since she'll, she won't be able to use it? Great question, Miss Linda. So here's what you need to know about scholarships. If you win a Coca-Cola scholarship and you win the Google, Lime, um, the Google Lime scholarship and the Jack Kent Cook scholarship, those are scholarships that you can combine. But let's say she won a scholarship from Lehman and then a scholarship from St. John's and a scholarship from the University of Albany. From the colleges, you can only accept the scholarship from the college you plan to attend. But if it's from a person or a company or an organization, you can combine them. So great question, what happens with all the money? She can only accept the money from the college she plans to go to. The other ones um, she cannot accept. But with these scholarships, sometimes they'll say, if your tuition and cost of attendance has been paid off, they'll write you a check and you'll get the money in the form of a check. So when I went to Columbia University, I had already paid all of my um, cost of attendance fees. And then I won a $7,000 scholarship and the um, scholarship foundation wrote me a check for $7,000 um, that I was able to utilize for whatever I needed as it pertains to school. And I gave up three years of high school. Great question. So scholarships will let you know. So the question is, and I'll just read it out loud. If a student wins a scholarship in ninth grade, but they have three more years until high school, um, do they get the money or do they hold it? So scholarships will let you know what the terms of agreement is. So if they have a scholarship for ninth graders, chances are they're going to hold it until the student becomes, you know, a 12th grader or it becomes, you know, their first year of college. And then they'll submit it to the, um, the registrar or bursar office, the, the office is processing all of the financial aid money that students are receiving. 
But again, sometimes scholarships will send you the money in the form of a check. So it really just depends what the terms of the scholarship is. So as you're searching this summer, next fall, um, you're going to see exactly how these scholarships are going to send the money. Nine times out of 10, they're sending it directly to the school. Sometimes they will um, provide the students and families with a check or a deposit to utilize that money in whatever way they see fit. Ms. Linda, let me know if that answers your question. But do note that the bulk of scholarships do exist for juniors and seniors. There are fewer scholarships for ninth graders, but they do exist. These are a few you can look out for. A bunch of them clearly have closed already for you know, um, seniors this year or students this year. But the truth is they will reopen again. And the Jack Ken Cook is an amazing scholarship. You're talking 40,000. For most students, that's the entire cost of their attendance. There's also the Posse Scholarship. Posse is a full scholarship, QuestBridge. There's just so many to name, but I do suggest check out our website, check out our social media, because as we find them and they're open, we do post them as well. The other part you should understand is that, like I mentioned, colleges have internal scholarships. So the examples that we noted here are Bard College, Yale University, and New York University. So here are three examples of scholarships that exist within the schools, or excuse me, within the colleges that students can apply for. Some scholarships, students will automatically apply, uh, qualify for based on their application information, but most scholarships they will have to apply for. So let's say you know a student or you have a son or daughter that wants to go to Bard College, wants to go to Yale, you wanna go ahead and start checking out what are the scholarships that they have available. And do note that funding year to year changes, but generally scholarships are around for decades, decades and decades. So Posse and all these other scholarships have been around since I went to high school and I'm sure even before. So you wanna just gather as much information as possible. Every time you come across a scholarship, you wanna go ahead and drop it on that list. And the great thing about Google Docs or Google Drive is that they're live documents, right? So you don't have to send it as an attachment. You can just simply um, have your son or daughter add you as someone to share it with. And you guys can all um, just share all the information together and input information and input scholarships as you find them. But there are tons of uh, Instagram pages and Facebook pages that are dedicated to sharing scholarships. You wanna start finding them now so you can understand how to qualify. The other thing is you wanna create um, a document, like a Word document, but it's essentially a live one in Google Drive where you house all of your questions and answers because eventually you'll find that the more scholarships you do, the more the questions become kind of the same. So you can simply edit a previous answer and use that for a new scholarship. And it really just makes the application process so much easier and so much better to manage. And so we wanna just help you kind of debunk the idea that scholarships are hard to find and hard to come by and too competitive because I'm telling you firsthand, um, a similar you know, experience that we had was looking for grants and we were able to secure 80,000 in less than a year just off of you know, taking advantage of an opportunity and also creating a system that worked. And that's the system that we just shared with you all. Next question, do you know what a resident assistant is? What's a resident assistant? Do you, are you familiar? Have you heard of it? Let us know, yes or no. Do you know what a resident assistant is? All right, whoa, half and half. Half of you said yes, half of you said no. Let's get that 50 to a yes as well. So a resident assistant, someone that coordinates programs and activities. So this is someone who was hired by a college or university to kind of be a campus leader, like the epitome of a campus leader. They coordinate programs, they build a community of, uh, among the residents, they serve as a resource, they resolve student issues, and they enforce policies. So I know Kathleen likes to say they're like the landlord of the, of the floor. So each student is going to be assigned to a floor in the dormitory. And they're going to be the person that is the go-to person when a student is being challenged, right? When they are having roommate issues, when they're being challenged in school and need some support, that's the person that's going to be, you know, the resource to students on campus. Now, this role is very, very important 
because they are the person that, again, is a key resource, but it also comes with such great benefits and perks. So take us to the next slide and let's check out what some of those are. The key, the reason why this position is so, you know, in demand and super competitive is because being a resident assistant means that partial or your full housing cost and or board is covered. I'm gonna say that again. Being a resident assistant means that as a benefit, you can receive partial or fully covered housing and or board and board just means your meal plan. So let's take a look at what that means at three different universities. So at Temple University, they cover room and board and give a stipend, and that's about 9,000 a year. So whatever Temple costs, you're gonna minus 9,000 from it just off of having this position. The next, the University of Connecticut, also known as UConn, they cover room and an additional stipend. So we see it's a little bit different in Temple, but we see that they cover, you know, about, you know, uh, $11,000 in expenses. So that's another, you know, 11,000 off the bill. And then at Princeton University, and do note that Princeton of all these colleges cost the most, which would explain why they cover this much. It covers room and board, which again is the meal plan. And at Princeton, that's covering 17,000 per year. So just off of these three examples, we see a saving of 8,000 to 17 per year. This has nothing to do with scholarships. So if a student is on a scholarship but needed additional money because they were, maybe they had a loan or maybe they had an outstanding balance, becoming a resident assistant is an awesome thing. Do note that students cannot be resident assistants in their first year. They can apply, you know, in the spring of their first year to become a resident assistant in their sophomore year. And this is actually one of the many jobs that I had on campus. And it was, it, it yielded me so many benefits. I got to know so many great people, got to work with so many great people. And then of course, I was able to get my room, board and stipend um, as part of the position perks. Lastly, do you know what an accelerated degree program is? We are talking about another great way to save time and money. Do you know what an accelerated degree program is? Yes or no? All right, let's see what we got. All right, another 50-50. All right, let's get those no's to a yes. Accelerated degree programs, if you remember from earlier, I mentioned that at Columbia, I did an accelerated degree program. All that means is that you're taking more classes than usual in a short amount of time, um, and you're able to graduate at a faster rate. And so accelerated degree programs um, vary at each institution, but here at Bard College, Bar College offers a number of three plus two or four plus one programs where students in their third year of their undergraduate degree start their master's degree. And that way they graduate in five years as opposed to the traditional six or more years. They also have a four plus one program. So again, if you're interested in potentially saving money, an accelerated program is the way to go. So at Bard College, they have a three plus two program in their environmental policy program. They also have a Master of Arts in Teaching, which is a four plus one. And like I mentioned, at Columbia, I did an accelerated program where rather than earning my master's in two years of full-time classes, I was able to earn it in one year. And at this time, Columbia cost 52,000 a year. So I was able to save $52,000 in cost of attendance by expediting that process and getting through the program faster. So this is just another great way to save time and money when it comes to going to college. Next slide. The next and last accelerated program we want to discuss is the Yale University program. This is a five-year bachelor's and master's program where students can earn their master's and um, bachelor's in public health in a shorter amount of time. So again, this is another excellent, excellent way to get through school sooner while not rushing, but really just utilizing your time and money efficiently to ensure that you know, you're saving as much time as possible. So again, 
as you're searching for colleges, find out if they have an accelerated degree program, and then you want to find out in what majors and really what that program means. What's the application process like? Um, what's the speed at which you can get through the program? What are the different offerings? And then, of course, um, also, where do students end up after these programs? And that's very, very important to consider. All right, so some quick wrap up reminders. For my students, I want you to go ahead and participate in extracurricular activities. For my parents, please encourage them to participate in extracurricular activities. This is going to help their applications stand out. For parents and students, get to know your guidance in school counselors. It is crucial when it comes to this college application process. The truth is, Guidance schools and college counselors are overwhelmed with the number of students they usually have to work with on average, but you can certainly make your student stand out. You can certainly develop a relationship with them. So if you have not yet, now is the perfect time. Send them an email. Good afternoon. My name is so-and-so. I, you know, I'm the mother of, you know, X student. I'd love to get to know um, more about how I can best prepare my child for college. Can we, you know, set up 30 minutes to chat? It's that simple, right? So the goal is really to utilize all the resources that your school provides. Um, the next thing is ask about college now. It's an excellent program. Um, I think someone mentioned in the chat that the application, the registration process is coming up. So stay tuned for that and ask questions. Visit the college websites. Each college is going to tell you exactly what they require. So your job is to ensure you meet those requirements by the time it is time for you to submit your applications. Work on scholarship searches each week. And it is not an easy process, but you can certainly make it simple and efficient. And again, the more scholarships you apply to, the more the questions kind of start sounding the same and the easier it is to apply. So the first couple of scholarships might be a little bit intense, but moving forward, it might be a lot easier for you as you're going. Start doing your research early. Do not wait until senior year to start researching. The truth is so many colleges now also have virtual college tours. They have Zoom meetings you can set up. So now you don't even have to leave your home to like visit a college in, in Pennsylvania or speak to an admissions counselor. You can go ahead and you know set up a virtual call with them. So these are all some reminders we want you guys to keep in mind. Next slide. So can you just drop in the chat for me really quickly? We have a few minutes. What is one college prep tip you learned today? So what's something that you're like, wow, I didn't, I never considered that. Um, or one thing that you're like, uh, I found that interesting. That's something that we plan to do. So I'll give you a minute to drop that in the chat for us. And I'm gonna check out some of the comments in the chat. I see we have a few. Daughter started visiting colleges in junior high school. That is awesome. We love that. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. So yes, have her continue and check out some of the virtual tours that are available online as well that she can take advantage of. Awesome. Yes, when you know where you're going, it's easier to get there. I love that. Awesome. I found the Common app very interesting. Yes, please go ahead and check out the Common app because it's so important to understanding everything you need to do long before you get there. If you have any additional um, wrap up tips that you learned today, please go ahead and drop that in the chat for us. Get familiar with the Common App. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. You want to go ahead and get familiar. Great. And again, like I said, the Common App has not changed that much. Start researching grants and scholarships early. I promise you it gets easier. And I actually applied to a grant today. And I was able to use answers from previous grants we applied to, to submit the application. Like it was that easy because we already have the foundation in place. So again, it gets easier, but I promise you, one of my favorite quotes is start by starting. Like just start, just go ahead and start by starting. And then you'll start understanding it as you go. One tip and note everything the student can do because they'll be surprised at what they can help exactly on the application. So everything they've done, find a way to articulate it. Kathleen, go ahead and drop um, jobhero.com in the chat. That is a place where you can find sample resumes and you can get familiar with what, you know, you should be noting on your application. So if you're looking to describe what a babysitting opportunity was or looking to describe what being on the basketball team was, that is a great application, um, a great website to check out. And so today we're going to announce the winner of our gift. 
And the winner today is going to be, let me just scroll back up. It is going to be Kayla Santana. Thank you so much for being here, for participating. And for everyone else, thank you, whether you are the principal, school staff, teachers, our counselors, parents and students, we are really here for you, right? So the good thing is, Kathleen, go ahead and drop the next um, slide for me, please. The good thing is, again, the relationship doesn't end here. So you can certainly check us out on Facebook. There's our Facebook information. We are on IG, we're on LinkedIn, we're on YouTube, we're everywhere. Check out our website. And then if you have any additional questions, email us at pathwaystopurposenyc.com. Kayla, go ahead and get us an email to info at pathwaytopurpose.com with your full mailing address and we will get your prize over to you. Again, everyone, thank you so much for being here, for making the time. So to the staff, thank you so much for having us. We love to add value to your school. And so we're excited to be partnered with you um, just to ensure that students are on their way to college. And we're again, happy to provide any support that we can outside of this workshop. Um, Ms. Jiggins, Mr. Reed, if you have any closing thoughts you wanna share, please do as we wrap up. I just want to thank everyone for their time. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, Samantha. And um, I hope everyone was able to learn something. It was a great presentation. Your energy was awesome, like always. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Dixon. I see you in the chat. Thank you so much. Everyone have an awesome night. And remember, keep in touch with us. Let us know. And I'm excited to get the flashcards out to you all. So stay tuned for that process. But um, again, start preparing now and really just start by starting. So we'll see you again, hopefully. And um, have a great night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Mar. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone.